We have here the temple of Debod, a temple that was built on the banks of the Nile, where the great Egyptian pharaonic culture developed. What we want to highlight in relation to the theogonic, religious and philosophical principles of these great civilizations such as Egypt in this case, is that they were always based on the cult of fire, represented by the god Ra. In fact, this temple of Debod was consecrated to the sun and to Isis, the mother. The masculine principle and the feminine principle were central to the development of any serpentine culture. Those civilizations that worshipped fire have always been known as the serpentine cultures because both in the East and in the West, the progress of mankind has always been marked by the use of fire from the external point of view and from the spiritual, theogonic point of view. The Greeks, for example, started the evolutionary journey of human progress when Prometheus brought fire from Olympus. And likewise, for the Egyptians, the central theogonic part was Ra, the father, the sun. So they always built their temples, their pyramids, to worship fire, in this case Ra, the god Ra. The famous theory of relativity, Albert Einstein's equation, states that energy is equal to mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. We can easily interpret this equation and find that from the light we can also get to mass. In other words, as mass is transformed into energy, the energy from light, the energy that comes from the sun, has crystallized into mass. In other words, this explains that the origin of everything is the energy that comes from the sun. Plants receive that energy through the process of photosynthesis. Same with minerals, that's why diamond is an extraordinary receptor of light. And also with animals, for example, on fish that have scales, each scale is a photocell that receives solar energy in order to transform it into life. And as human beings, we also have a mechanism that has not been studied by science. But we too are dependent on that solar energy. That's why Christ said, man does not live by bread alone. So this is the explanation that we offer for the equation of Albert Einstein. But these temples, whether we call them temples, pyramids or structures, were in fact true colleges of initiation where the age-old secrets of the authentic cult of fire were practiced. The cult of fire involves or has a direct relationship with the management of the three primary forces, which is why in the different religious theogonies, there are always three principles that are worshipped. In Christianity, for example, this is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Hinduism, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Likewise, in the Egyptian culture, Osiris, Isis and Aurus. These three fundamental principles of life are found in the physics contained in the atom, electron, proton and neutron. And this can be described as the genetic design that each living being or creation has, impressed on it or coming from the sun. Life always develops from wherever the light of the sun reaches. These three principles, as the ancients knew, are ultimately found concentrated within the seed, in any seed, but in this case, in the human seed. Thank you.
we should not only study and be amazed by their architectural and mathematical knowledge, but they also had an extraordinary knowledge about the movements of the stars, the heavenly bodies, and the constellations. The design of Egyptian structures is always influenced by the sun. The altars of the Egyptian temples always receive the light of the sun. We are also reminded of the pyramids of Central America, the Mayan pyramids, and how they celebrated the 21st of March, the day of the arrival of spring, as the descent of Kukulkan. For them, the descent of the sun converted into a serpent. Fire was the symbol of life. Every planet where the fire is extinguished becomes a corpse. Every human being, when the fire of life is extinguished, goes cold and becomes a corpse. Fire is the symbol of life, but it was also the symbol of the spirit. Because they knew a secret technique that allowed them to develop their inner fire. so that they could then bear the sacred cobra on their foreheads as symbols of true men, of kings or pharaohs. That sacred cobra of the Egyptian pharaohs represents the same kundalini of the ancient Hindus. It also represents the Esculapian serpent of the ancient Greeks and the same serpent that Moses used to heal the Israelites in the wilderness. The serpent has always been a symbol of fire. Why? Because the fire, which develops from our own seed and is projected inwards and upwards, has the form of a serpent, which is why it was allegorized by the serpent. So here we can see a relationship with the human seed, with the male sexual aspect, and within that seed, we find the image of the serpent as a symbol of fire. Because that is the mechanism in all living beings, that is, light penetrates, collides with worlds, plants, minerals, animals, and humans, and is received and taken to the nucleus of our own world in this case, to our own creative seed. On receiving the rays of the sun and through an extraordinary physiological mechanism of our occult anatomy, that sunlight goes to the endocrine glands of the human being and is taken to our own creative seed, which is our spermatic waters. As we can observe, we see some alchemical symbols, but they are inverted, because the process of receiving the light, so that this light is later captured within our own human seed, that light is transformed into the fire of life and remains there as an innate, incipient, integral form, waiting for the moment of resurgence. That's why we see the form of a serpent within that seed, which represents the fire that is enclosed in it. But that fire is later liberated through a certain technique of what is known as the Hermetic Art. which the alchemists called alchemy, and is transformed into the serpent that ascends through the spine, which is known as the Kundalini 
or the cobra of the pharaoh. That is the way in which the marvelous symbiosis takes place between the light that comes from the sun, transforming itself into fire, so that this fire through this alchemical process is released and we can then conquer the light, but now on a higher octave.